Love always finds a way, doesn't it? When someone we love is hurting, we can't stop thinking about it. We can't stop wondering how we can help take their pain away. That's just the nature of love, isn't it? The Apostle Paul wrote, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. In other words, love never stops believing there's a way to help someone out. It finds hope in just about any option and puts up with anything to help the other person. Isn't that why we love Jesus so much? He put up with death, even on a cross, so that the ones he loved could be saved. That's who God is. He is love. And all through the scriptures, we have the testimony of God helping his loved ones get out of trouble. For example, when the Jews were made slaves in Egypt, the Bible says that God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and God knew. God didn't bury his head in the sand. He heard the groaning of his people, and he could no longer just sit back and do nothing. He had to do something, so he came up with a plan to help them. Out of the burning bush, he called Moses, saying, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God almost always chooses people to help other people out of their troubles. In this case, however, Moses was called, but not too willing. He made lots of excuses to try to get out of the call. What if the people don't listen to me? What if the people won't believe me? But the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses ran from it. Pharaoh had a powerful army, and Moses had just a simple shepherd's staff. But God used that staff in the hands of Moses to destroy the Egyptians. He used that staff in Moses' hands to perform supernatural acts, including the parting of the Red Sea, that set the Jews free from slavery. Although Moses saw himself as weak and unable to do anything, God took what was in his hand and turned it into a supernatural weapon of mass destruction of God's enemies. What's in your hand? Do you have something simple that God can turn into a supernatural weapon of mass destruction of God's enemies? During the pandemic, we were faced with something no one in our generation had ever faced before. The threat of getting sick and even dying was all around us. Fear had gripped not just our nation, but the entire world. We were locked in our houses by government order. We couldn't go to restaurants or even to go out and get our hair cut. Our friends couldn't come over to visit, no Sunday dinner with our relatives, and even our kids had to stay home from school. What a challenge. Even the church suffered. Most church services around the world just stopped. Our missions organization had to cancel many trips that had been planned. Now, pastors are commanded to feed the sheep and missionaries are commanded to go and make disciples. But all of that came to a screeching halt. But for many of us, love found a way. Like our special guest today, we soon discovered that the technology was in our hands to reach people by video. It wasn't very familiar to us. But pastors and missionaries all around the world figured out how to reach people in other places by video with God's love and power. As a result, the work of God has continued, and many people around the world are continuing to hear the word and receive healing and God's great salvation. As you look at your life, you may think that you are too old or too weak or too poor to make a difference in the lives of others. But remember Moses that when he offered his simple walking stick to the Lord, God used it to change the lives of millions. I challenge you today to express your faith in God by believing that he will take what little you have and turn it into an instrument of love for his glory. God bless you as you go in faith to love your neighbor.